And you know, if you are a normal human being, you are going to want the, the best for your children, aren't you? And, and the best is in God's Word. It's not our opinion. It's God's Word that's the best uh, instructions for raising our children. So the first thing I want to think about is, what are some reasons to raise godly children? What are, what are some reasons that God gives us as far as raising godly children? And I think the first reason that we want to raise godly children is, the first one's quite obvious, that they would be saved. All right? I mean, the fact that God tells us in Malachi 2.15 to, that, that instructs us to have a godly seed, just by its own definition, to have a godly seed would require for them to be God's children, to be God's seed. Not just my seed, not just your seed, but God's children, God's seed. And so it's important just by its own de definition that we would see young children saved at an early age, hopefully. Okay, because when they're saved, John, John 1 12 says, But as many as received him, as many as received Jesus Christ, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, the name of Jesus Christ. So a lot of people think, you know, when you go door knocking, a lot of people say, you know, we're all children of God. But that's not true. God tells us that to become a child of God, to be one of his seed, we must believe on the name of Jesus Christ, we must believe on the gospel. So in order for us to raise that godly seed, of course we are to instruct our children the gospel. We are you know, seeking to have our children saved and be sure about going to heaven. And so that's the first reason uh, to have a godly seed, isn't it? I mean, that's, that's the most obvious reason that uh, God gives us children so they would become his children in due time. Now, the second reason to raise a godly seed, the second reason is that they may fear the Lord, and you'll look at, you'll see this in verse number 10 here. We'll read that again, verse number 10. Especially the day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in Horeb, when the Lord said unto me, Gather me the people together, and I will make them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me. Okay? That they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth, and that they may teach their children. Okay? Teach their children to what? To fear the Lord all the days of their life. So the second reason God wants us to raise a godly seed is that they would fear the Lord. There would be that next generation that fears the Lord. You know, if, you, if we could summarize what we're seeing in our world, our depraved world, you know, if what, what we can summarize, you know, seeing uh, the new generation coming in, in to be, I think we can clearly see that the biblical morals have been done away with. We can see that there is a lack of the fear of the Lord in our children, in, our, in the generation, in our world, in Australia. We can see that they do not fear the Lord. And you might ask, well, why doesn't, why doesn't our, our society fear the Lord anymore? You know, they don't believe they're accountable to a greater power anymore. They, they don't feel like they're accountable to God. Sebastian, don't touch. Okay, they don't feel they're accountable to God. You know, they grow up in, in the official religion of the public school system, which is atheism. They won't say that, but it is. Okay, the fact that they're teaching evolution to our children from a very early age. I mean, the very earliest books that you buy your children about maybe dinosaurs. You know, kids love dinosaurs. Just those books, first page, millions of years ago. Millions of years ago before man was on the earth. Dinosaurs roamed the earth. I mean, this is what children are hearing from primary school and younger, all the way to those that go to university, evolution being, being forced upon our necks and, and just, just driven down our throats. Okay, we are bringing up children to be atheists. We are, children, we are bringing up children to believe in, not believe in a creator God. And, and when we teach our children these things, it's obvious that they're not going to fear the Lord. It's obvious that they're not going to feel they're accountable to a greater a person. And uh, this is why God says to us, look, I want you to raise your children. One of my reasons that I have for you to raise a godly seed is that there will be a generation that fears the Lord. And this is important for us to consider as Christians. Um, you know, that they would fear the Lord and, and live a life. Because if you fear the Lord and you're accountable to Him, you're going to want to live according to His rules, right? You're going to want to please Him. And that's what God seeks from, from our children. Now, the third reason why God would have us to raise a godly seed is that they may have wisdom and understanding. Wisdom and understanding. This is in verse number six here. Keep therefore and do them. Just talking about the word of God and his commandments. For this is your wisdom and your understanding. Okay, so the word of God 
God's word is our wisdom and our understanding. God wants us to have children, a godly seed that is full of wisdom and understanding. And this, this follows from the second point about fear in the Lord. Proverbs 9.10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. So the reason we want our kids to fear the Lord is so they would have that wisdom and understanding that God wants us to raise our uh, pass on to our children, according to this passage. So, um, you know, true wisdom, true understanding comes from the fear of God. And it should be our desire to have wise children. I don't want to raise children that are, that are considered stupid, right? Uneducated children. I want my children to be wise. And I'm not seeking them necessarily to have the wisdom of this world, but I want them to have the wisdom that God can provide, that only God can give. God knows a human being better than anybody else. God knows this world better than anyone else. I want my children to learn from God, not necessarily learn from the ways of the world. And, you know, it's, it's not that I undermine academic education. I think it's important. I think academics are important. I think it's important for our children to, to do well in school. You know, one reason why we do homeschool our children is because we wanted our kids to, to, um, to do well academically. You know, I, one, of the, one of the things I felt, you know, I had the experience of going to public school and to private school, Christian private school. I felt there was no difference between the two, to be honest with you. And uh, I just felt, you know, it, you know, uh, even before I married, got married, that I wanted my, my children to be homeschooled. And um, so, you know, I'm not against uh, academics. I'm not against that at all. I mean, that, that is one of the reasons why we homeschool. But that is not the wisdom. It's not the wisdom of the world that I want my children to learn. It's not the wisdom of the world that God wants our godly seed to have. It's His wisdom. Okay? Now, God's Word, the Bible, is our instructions for life. It will instruct us to know what's right and wrong. Good from evil. The fact that there is, I mean, just look at our world, the fact that they call so many things good evil and so many things that are evil good tells us that they don't have the wisdom of God. Okay, and if we didn't have the Bible, we, w we wouldn't know what's right and what's wrong. That comes from God's word alone. And, you know, one definition of wisdom is the ability, ability to judge correctly and to follow the best course of action based on knowledge and understanding. So in school, kids will learn a lot of knowledge but they will not learn wisdom. Wisdom is the application of that knowledge. Okay? Knowledge is knowing the choices that are available, but wisdom is making the right choice. Okay? There are many options that we can take in life, but wisdom is the one that tells you, or that, you know, the wisdom is, is when you make that right choice. And that's the difference between wisdom and knowledge. Now, but a fourth reason, a fourth reason that we are to raise a godly seed is that they would be a light to their generation, a, a light to their generation. And look at verse, uh, verse 6, we just read that. Uh, Keep therefore to do them, for this is your wisdom in, and understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, so what are these heathen nations about saying about Israel if they keep the commandments of God? They're going to be sailing, say, saying, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what nation is there so great who have God so nigh unto them as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for. So one reason, another reason to raise a godly seed is that they would be a light in their generation. You see, the purpose of Israel was to point the heathen nations to the true God. Uh, they were to be this model nation that God had set up on this, on this earth for people to say, wow, look at Israel. Who is the God of Israel? Who is this God that they worship? and point them to, to, to the Lord. And, you know, this is the same expectation upon us as, as the nation that uh, is spoken about as, as a Christian nation, that people are to look at us and say, who is the God of this people? And one, so one reason to raise this godly seed is that they would be a light to the next generation. Now, I'll turn to Matthew chapter 5. Verse 14 to 16, you guys know this one. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So do you notice there 
that we are to shine the light of Jesus into this world. For what purpose? Verse 16 tells us that they may see your good works. We want the heathen, the ungodly people to see that good works and that they may glorify uh, the Father which is in heaven, your Father which is in heaven. So, of course, the best way to do this is soul winning. You know, the fact that we go out and preach the gospel, you know, be able to uh, convince some people about their need for a saviour and, and when they turn to the Lord, they are then glorifying the Father which is in heaven. This is how we are to shine the light in this world. And this is why God wants us to raise a godly seed is so that they would be a light to the next generation. Now, the fifth reason I have uh, to have a godly seed is found in Psalms. Psalm 127, verse number 5. We read this last time. But it says there, Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. All right. The next reason to raise a godly seed is so that we can enjoy them. Okay. So that we can enjoy our children. So that it would bring happiness and joy to the home. You know, godly children brings joy. They bring happiness to the home and to the marriage. You know, and as, as fathers, we often have a lot of things in our mind, right? We're at work for a number of hours every day. You know, we come home, maybe stressed out, exhausted about different things. You know, and, it, and it's, it, it, uh, it's such a nice thing to be greeted by your children when, when they're delighted to see you come home from work, you know. And, and there are times where, you know, the kids want to play. They haven't seen you all day. They want to play. And, and I've, you know, I've, I've been, oh, I've got things on my mind. I need to think. But then I think, no, I've got to spend time with my children. You know, you play with them, you talk with them. And I found that spending time with your children is a great relief, a great stress relief, and it will liven your spirits. It will make you a child again, okay? Because they want to play childish games, so you need to get down to their level and play with them. And, you know, all that stress or that worry or, or whatever it is that you're thinking about during the day goes away for that brief moment where you can just, just be refreshed with your children. It does bring joy to your life and you might say yeah but that verse says you know happy is the man you know happy is the father you know not the mother because the mother has to stay home all day with the children you know uh, all the work or the cooking or the cleaning you know it says happy is the man not happy is the woman you know uh, but I did find a verse here so we'll go to Psalm uh, 113 verse number 9 Talking about God here. He maketh the barren woman to keep house and to be a joyful mother of children. All right. So yes, mothers, you also get to enjoy, uh, have the joy of, of having children. You know, God is that, you know, God purpose for you is to keep your home, to raise your children and to do it in a joyful way. Okay. Raising children ought not to be this burden and this stress on your life. And if it is, then your perspective's not right. You've got to remember, look, you're raising children for the Lord. You're doing this for God and God wants you to do it in a joyful way. He wants it to bring joy to your life. Okay? So, yes, ladies, you can have fun with the kids too, not just the men. Uh, so, you know, and, and I'm glad that this church, we do celebrate mothers. You know, I'm glad we do uh, highly respect the homemaker. Okay? We, do, we don't look down and say, well, a woman ought to have this career to make something of herself. No, the best job that a mother can have is to raise her children for the Lord. Okay, so I'm glad we, we are in a church that sees that uh, like that. Um, so my final reason to raise a godly seed or, or raise godly children, and I'm sure there are many other reasons, you know, to raise a godly children, but, but my final one is that we may know God more. Okay, one reason to raise godly children is that so we as parents may know God better, that we may know God more. And you know, you know, after having children, after experiencing fatherhood for the first time and growing into it, I got a lot more insight about my relationship with God, my relationship as a son of God to God the Father. And you know, there's been many young fathers that I've spoken to that have reflected or said the same thing. They've learned new things about God by becoming a father. And for example, you know, when you take that newborn child into your arms, you know, after it's born, you know, you realize that that child can't take care of itself. You realize that it cannot feed itself. It cannot change its own nappy. You know, that baby is completely dependent upon the parents, is it not? Completely dependent upon the parents. 
And it reminds me that we are completely dependent upon God. You know, when we start thinking that we don't need God, it's the time that you become prideful, full of, full of pride. And, uh, you know, God doesn't see us that way. God sees us as that child. He, we're his children. We, are, we ought to be completely dependent upon the Lord. Uh, you know, and, and he is supposed to be looking out for our needs and our necessities in life, just the way we, we look out for a baby. And also, when you have a child, you observe how quickly that child grows and develops. I mean, too quickly, really. I mean, I can't, I've mentioned this before, but I can't believe that Isabel's 10. It just blows me away. I remember having her as a two-week-old, just holding her at, on my chest. And, uh, you know, they grow so quickly, they develop mentally and physically. You know, they start on milk, right? A, a newborn baby starts on milk. But before you know it, they're eating you out of house and home. I mean... You know, we go shopping, the pantry's full, the next day it's empty. You know, I just, <laughs> I mean, it's, obviously, it's obvious that they're growing and, and eating, eating up, you know, and that's good. But it reminds me that, you know, as children of God, that we require that sincere milk, milk of the Word of God and that we ought to be growing spiritually as well. Just as we see children grow, we ought to be growing spiritually. We ought to be maturing ourselves in the Bible so that we can then tackle that strong meat and those meat and potatoes of the Word of God, those strong doctrines. You know, and another fact is that we're natu naturally protective of our children, aren't we not? We want to make sure that our children don't uh, hurt themselves, don't, uh, you know, we want to make sure that we lay out rules and boundaries for them to protect them. You know, we don't want them running out on the street, getting hit by a car or what have you. So we set rules and boundaries for our children to keep them safe. And, you know, that reminds me that in the same way God has given us his word, God has given us the Bible, his commandments and statutes so that we would be protected from harm, so that we would not sin and hurt ourselves and, and hurt other people. So having children deepens our appreciation also for the redemptive plan of God. I mean, you know, how did God love this world so much that he would give and sacrifice his own son the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, which of us in a life and death situation, you know, those of us that have children, think about sacrificing one of our own sons or daughters, right? For, for some stranger, someone we don't know, an enemy, okay? I mean, I couldn't even bear thinking about sacrificing my child in a life and death situation for somebody else. I mean, I would, I would save my children first. I mean, I'm just being honest with you. And so having children helps us understand the significance of Christ's sacrifice. The fact that the Father would sacrifice His own Son for us and give us that greater appreciation for the love of God, the deepness of God's love, far beyond what a human is able to, to, to do and, and, and give. So just to summarize, five reasons to raise, a godly, to raise godly children was number one, that they may be saved and become a child of God. Number two, that they may fear the Lord. Number three, that they would be wise. Number four, that they would be a light to their generation. Number five, to bring joy to the home, to the house. And six, that we may know God better, that we may understand that relationship as children of God and God the Father.